you've got to take it on you because for every time you think you're working hard, there's somebody out there working harder. guys, Coach Madden, YouGoProBaseball.com. We're here with Kyle Schmidt, and he is a current professional catcher in the Twins organization. We're not doing catching right now. We're going to talk some hitting, and I want to pick his brain about his hitting routine, something that he can do, he does, to get ready in 10, 15 minutes, maybe just to feel mm -hmm. his swing and get it tight and get it right so he can start crushing balls all over the field. Kyle's got a really great Instagram page I want you guys to go check out, at KGS Baseball or KGSBaseball.com. Check him out. Really good info there. But let's get into it. Tell mm -hmm. us what you do to get your swing right. Gotcha. So whenever I'm jumping into swing, I don't want to just jump in the cage and go, all right, let's take some BP. There are certain things that I want to feel before I get ready for that live arm, that machine, that game time arm. So I don't want to just jump in there and go, all right, I'm stretched, I'm loose. Let's get my timing and go. I want to feel certain patterns. I know whenever you did the video with Dustin Geiger, Bobby Tewksbury, they talked a little bit about some of those drills and those exercises. So I just want to give you a look at how I get ready to hit. And I think that that's an interesting statement because you think hitting, oh, you're just going to get in there and hit. Like, no, we need to still build up and get ready. Just like we did in our catching videos, making sure that we're prepped and we're ready to go to execute whenever we want to. Here, same thing. I want to make sure that that swing is right and as good as it can be whenever we get ready to go. So what I like to do is I want to set that tee up pretty deep, slightly elevated on the outside part of the plate. And this is just me too. This is not, you should do this exact routine, but if you can pick some pieces from this that are gonna help you, awesome. So whenever I like to, or whenever I get started, what I like to do is I'll start way away from this tee. <clears throat> then I'll just start feeling some rhythm, feeling some uh, swagginess, if you will, up there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step in with my back foot. I'm gonna load my back hip and come up into my leg kick or my leg lift. And then from there, I'm gonna get off of that and swing and get through the ball. So a couple things that I wanna feel here whenever I'm doing this is that I'm stable on my back foot. I'm actually getting into my back hip, into that rear load. And then from there, I'm balanced as I separate and begin to rotate at my hips and get through the ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a swing where I'm nice and rhythmic. I know this cage is playing with me back here, but I'm gonna step in, load, and then not roll over the ball like that. So for me, that's a bad start. So I wanna make that adjustment. Next swing, feel that in my body. Get into it, separate, and then drive that ball and feel that finish and hold that for a second. Now you're, mm -hmm. you're going pretty aggressive right here, first mm -hmm. two swings out of the box. Obviously you're warming up your body before you get in here. Yeah. Are you taking any easy swings before you get into this or are you um, pretty much getting right into it? Some days I will. Some days I'll come in, I may just take a swing where I'm at like, 20% just to feel my body move and trying to get through that ball. However, I, I like to focus in on my intent and what that's like. So I never want to go from, even if I'm doing this step-in drill, I don't just want to step in and swing through that and finish and then try to jump from these drills and these exercises into whenever there's velo, there's break or something else to where I have to ramp up that intent and be ready to go. I want to feel my body rotating, my body moving, the barrel getting through the ball pretty much from the start. And that comes from our prep exercises. We may do med ball work, making sure that we're stretched and good to go and having that intent and knowing where that should be. So you're full, your body is fully hot already before you step into the cage. Yeah. Gotcha, all right. And so like with the twins, whenever we're you know in season at spring training, we make sure that we do that every single day. We make sure we get our body loose. When we're in the off season, we gotta make sure that we still get our body loose before we go. Because if we're not loose, if we can't move the same way that we would whenever we're swinging when we're hot, it's gonna be hard for us to feel those same things throughout our swing. So how many swings of those are you doing? You know, some days I may take three or four, some days I may take 20. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Like I really wanna feel here that hip and get into that load. I wanna feel my chest posture get over my hips and my legs. I don't wanna be too tall. As I load, I wanna feel getting into my body as I go. And I think that's what that step in helps with. Whenever I'm here, I'm stepping in, I'm getting there. And then from there, I start my swing. So what are you doing after this? Progressing it to something else? Another hitting drill or? Yes, so next one that I'm gonna do, I wanna preface this, I didn't come up with any of these drills. Like these are just things that I found and built for myself that I think allow me to be the best hitter that I can when it's time for BP or game. The next one that I like to do is a hover drill. So we're gonna get in that same position. I'm gonna move this ball now a little bit further towards the middle, a little bit further out in front. And all I'm gonna do is get balanced on my backside and hovering on that front foot. I wanna make sure that my knee doesn't crash one way or the other, so I'm not going outside my back foot, I'm not going inside my back foot. I'm staying stacked, I'm getting into that hip, 
And then from there, once I find that balance point, then I'm gonna continue that load and I'm gonna go. So I may start with my leg up because my leg kick normally is about here. So I may start with that leg up high, get stable, separate, and once that front foot hits the ground, I'm going to that ball. So if I take a full swing here, I'm gonna get balanced, stable, separate, and then go. And I'm okay, even though that pitch is middle away, I'm okay if I happen to pull that ball a little bit here, as long as I'm staying through it and I feel that good contact and that good swing. I noticed when you set the ball up, you set it up like this. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why? Yes, so when I was in college playing, I would set the ball up, I just throw it on the tee. However, like I didn't really have a set way. And somebody told me, I believe it was my hitting coach my junior year. He told me, he's like, hey man, when you go in there just to breed that consistency, it's like every time you do something, you wanna be consistent, set the ball up the same way, give yourself a visual. So I like to set that ball up generally with the seams open to where I can see that bottom seam of the ball and that's pretty much my target. I don't wanna to hit too much through the middle or top of the ball, especially when I'm doing my tee work, because then that's gonna to translate to me missing a little bit over the top of the ball whenever I get to something moving at me. So I wanna be consistent where I set it up. We can go here, you can go here, you can go here if you want, you're trying to stay on the inside of the ball, middle through the middle of the ball, whatever you want, but just making sure that that's consistent whenever you're setting the ball up on the tee. Next one that I like to do, and everything is kind of working from that step in, that walk up into my regular swings. So now I felt myself get into my load and go. I felt myself get nice and stable, load and go from there. Next one that I like to do is I like to get to my foot strike position. So when I say that, it's where my front foot's landing in the box. So I'll get set up in my normal stance, and then I'll go ahead and go through my full load. And from there, I'm gonna look back, like, all right, that's pretty good. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and just reset without moving my feet. And then from there, I'm gonna load my back hip, bring my hands up and stop, and then I'm gonna go from that position. So we call this a start stop, a wide base, there's different names for it. But we're basically isolating the lower half right here and isolating the rest of the body to make sure that from that launch position, that front foot strike, whatever you wanna call it, we're ready to go to get through that ball. So that way we can adjust. We don't necessarily have to be cookie cutter every time, like, oh, I've gotta be on time to get here. Once I get here, I know that I can adjust and get through that ball. So whenever I go, I'm gonna get about in that position. I like to open up my front foot just a hair whenever I swing, because I feel like my hips can clear a little bit better. But I'll get in there, start feeling that rhythm, load that back hip, come up, stop, and then rotate and try to get through that ball. So there, if I don't have that good swing, I'll get set back up again, make my mental adjustment, load, and then get through that ball, and that's a little bit better result, really trying to feel that top hand getting through there. After that, I may take a couple where I go split grip, so it's a wide split grip, and all this is feeling is that barrel turning, getting in the hitting zone, and then going from there, trying to get on plane early and stay through. And this is gonna be a low intensity exercise. I know we started out where it's more high intensity, a little bit lower intensity now. Try to feel that out, load, and try to stay through that ball. So again, my first swings, I'm kind of rolling over the top, pushing through to my left. I want to make that adjustment and get back more through the middle of the field. Wherever I go, load, stay there. And then from there, I'll go ahead and start moving the tee around a little bit. I may go more middle inside to where I can really start to feel getting through this inside pitch. Take my full swing, roll over the top of it again, make my adjustment. A little bit better result. And then from there, I may move it deep again and outside, just trying to drive that ball back up the middle or away. And really get through that ball and see how my body works through that pitch. So that's really, it's really a simple routine. It's just a couple things. Like I said, I may go in and take two swings on each one and go, hey, I feel good. I feel ready to go. Days like today, where those first few swings are rolling over the top, don't necessarily have the result that I want. I'm not gonna get frustrated with it, but I'm gonna make that adjustment until I feel right. So you can basically knock this out in under 10 minutes. Yeah. This routine, and you're doing oh, this yeah. every time before you hit? For the most part. There's some days, like I said, that I'll go in and I'll take a couple T-swings, but hey, I'm good to go. Let's roll into it. But there's certain mechanics in my swing that I wanna feel and certain things that I do wanna feel and how my body's moving and loading and working through the ball. And I try to hit those as often as I can before I get ready to swing. So you would say pretty much those four <laughs> hitting drills are your go-to kind of to get going. And then you said, let's roll into it. Rolling into it is that next step, front toss and Usually. then live BP? Usually, so usually you get a couple flips, you know, it could take less, could take more depending on the day. And then from there, I like to jump into machine work just because that velo's there. I don't have the same timing mechanism as an arm coming through. And so for me, I've got to get ready to go. And once that front foot hits, 
I'm ready to get through that ball. So that's a look at my tee routine right there for every single day that I hit or for the most part whenever I hit. Are you a music guy? Do you like having music on when you hit? Headphones yes. on, headphones off? So I think that's an interesting question because I've hit with headphones before, but I like having the feedback of the bat and how it sounds coming off the ball. That said, I love when there's music blaring around me. I love when somebody's on the aux or I'm on the aux and we've got speakers bumping, we're having a good time, we're enjoying hitting because hitting should be fun. Like you get to crush baseballs and especially in a, a cage setting, you don't have the pitcher up there going, hey, I'm going to mix you four different pitches and one at bat and we're not going to have that same like, oh, I got to adjust to this, 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 and this. We're just in the cage having fun, having a blast. We're still working on things, but definitely love to get some tunes going. Question not related to hitting. You're from Texas and I'm kind of curious, what is the music that you're listening to? If it's you and you got the phone, you got the playlist, what are we listening to? I like rock, man. There's some days we'll go in, like we have Texas Country Tuesdays, that's a thing, where we'll go in and listen to some country music by Texas artists and we're just chilling, having a good time. There's other days where it's like, no, we've got high velo machine, let's go. Let's put on some old school rock or some new school rock and get after it. Biggest takeaway <laughs> for me, at least, for me, at least in this video, was that you were making adjustments. You're not just in here swinging away, mm -hmm. you're really focusing on it. If you had a bad one, you're feeling it and you're trying to make a, an adjustment on the next pitch. Can you just elaborate a little bit on how you take that feedback from your body? Because I think this is not talked about too much in coaching, like how you take that visceral feeling and in your head, like the process in between pitches, mm -hmm. from the feeling to the thought to the application on the next swing. Kind of take us through that little process. Yeah, so I think the number one thing is we've got to know that we're going to take good swings. We're going to take bad swings. We take thousands and thousands of swings. And as you work through your career, that number is just going to go up. You're going to go from thousands of swings over the year to you're going to take thousands of swings in two weeks. And that's just how it is. You're taking a few hundred swings a day. You're wearing your body. You're trying to feel those things. You're trying to make those adjustments. So the number one thing for me is don't get frustrated. I don't ever get frustrated whenever I'm swinging to an extent. There's some times where I'm like, come on, like I got I to gotta be better than that. I got to make that. But there's no time where I'm in there just mad because I'm not seeing the results that I want. And that's what I try to communicate with my clients too. It's like you, you take a swing, use that as feedback, just like you said. Don't use that as I'm gonna get frustrated and I'm gonna try to kill this next ball to make that adjustment. So whenever we're talking about that, I think you need to know the difference too between a good miss and a bad miss. That's something that Kyle Gray and I talk about is you need to know the difference between a good miss and a bad miss. So a bad miss, maybe you crush a ball, but mechanically or feel-wise didn't feel right and you wanna make an adjustment from there. A good miss could be you miss hit a ball a little bit or you don't get all of the ball that you're trying to get, but it was a really good swing and you've got to take that feedback and go, hey, that was a great swing. I just missed it. Was it my timing? Was it this? Did the ball move a little bit? Was it a, a you know, two seam cutter breaking ball that had a little bit more bite than I was expecting? Then use that to your advantage instead of thinking of it as a negative. Now, that's great perspective. Now, what about from the coach's perspective? when you're trying to help a hitter understand that. Are you telling him after every single hit everything that he did wrong in the previous swing? Or are you trying to take what you just said to me and teach him that so he can build his own, or is it somewhere in between? Am I totally off base? I, I, think, it's, I think it's definitely somewhere in between. The guys that I've worked with, myself, like people who've worked with me, you know, there's some guys out there that they take a swing and they want that feedback. Like, hey, what did I do in that swing right there? And for us, that's where we communicate to them. And you kind of get to know those guys and build those relationships to where whenever you see somebody take a swing, if they swing and then they look at you immediately, it's like, all right, I'm gonna give you feedback there. Or if I don't want that, I'm gonna tell them like, hey, go ahead and take another swing. And there's also guys, they'll take 10 swings and then we'll step out and talk about it. Or it's like, hey, what did you feel during that set of swings, whether it's on T, whether it's on flips, whether it's BP or machine. And so just understanding the different types of people that you're working with, whether you're a player, whether you're a coach, and then trying to make those adjustments, not necessarily mechanical adjustments, but make those adjustments between how you communicate. Now, let me ask you about using technology mm -hmm. when you're hitting, because you work out at 180 Performance Center, shout out Dustin, <laughs> Bobby, Scott, Brandon, everybody over there, beautiful place. We shot some videos over there. Mm -hmm. I'll leave some of the links down below where you can watch them. But you guys got a ton of awesome stuff there. You got the Win Reality, you got the Hit Tracks, you've got the Pocket Radar, you've got the Rap Soto, you've mm -hmm. got all this technology. Do you like using that stuff as a hitter? Do you get a lot of feedback from it? How often do you use it? Just give me that from your perspective as a hitter. Yes, sir. So obviously we have the tech at 180 where we train and it's really nice to have. It's not an absolute though. Like we're out here just talking hitting in a cage. You know, we don't have any technology. We got a hitting mat and then some dirt. I tend to hit on hit tracks every day that I hit and I don't use that necessarily as like, oh, hit the ball 100 miles an hour today, that's cool. I look at it as, hey, am I staying within like the hard hit range that I'm trying to achieve? So on the pitches that I barrel, mechanically, do I feel right? 
and that's first and foremost. Does it, did it feel good? Did everything link up and get through that ball? And then I may look up and say, okay, hit that ball that hard. I hit that ball at that angle. Where did I contact that baseball? So it's just a feedback tool for me more than anything. Instead of looking at it like I'm gonna go up there and just get ramped up and take an aggressive swing, even if it's a rollover to short and we hit it as hard as we can, for me, that's probably a bad miss. I definitely use it as a feedback tool more than anything of just, am I doing what I'm trying to do whenever I'm swinging? And then there's some numbers and some other stuff behind it that I get to look at. Take us through a day of training from right, like say right now, we're coming into the season. Well, maybe the we're season. coming into the season. <laughs> we don't know if we're coming into the season or not, but let's say it was a normal year mm -hmm. and we didn't have all this craziness. You would be getting ready to go to the season, go to spring training. What's a normal day routine for you? Like from a hitting perspective and from a catching perspective and from a weight training perspective. Okay. Are you going in and doing 10 minutes off the tee, some front toss and some live, you got 15 minutes in the cage, 10 minutes of catching, 20 minutes in the gym, or, or are you there for five, six hours? I, how, how does that work? So definitely there for a little bit longer at this point in time during the year. In a normal year, you know, this is early February, we're getting ready to report, or catchers may have already reported early to go out for our camps. It just depends organization by organization, but I'm gonna spend probably an hour, hour and a half in the cage. I'm gonna catch for half an hour to an hour, and that's just getting my machine work, getting my drill sets in, getting all of that done. If there's pitchers throwing, may catch their pins, probably gonna catch their pins. If they're throwing live, catch and stand in, even if I don't swing just to see that ball coming at me. And then once we get done with everything, we'll go next door over to True Grind, and then we'll be in there for an hour and a half, two hours on the weight side. Not necessarily, you know, blowing up weight, pulling heavy weight every single day, but making sure we're moving correctly, making sure that everything's working together in our body. And then we put all that together and that's, you know, where we get ready for the season. So I just added all that up and that was about five hours. So you're telling me to be good at this game, you can't put in 15 minutes a day and just be good at this game that you actually have to put in some hard work like you can't just watch this YouTube video and go I'm gonna be better this year because now I know these four drills I don't think so I agree. there are there are some guys out there that they don't need a ton of reps and they'll go out on the field and they'll just crush it there's guys like that but for the rest of us you gotta work hard you gotta bust it you've got to be committed and you've got to be okay with the monotony of training every single day I didn't think of that that was a quote that I heard from somebody else I, I don't know where but you know training can be monotonous at times it can be boring where you go in you're like man I really don't want to do this today I'm not feeling it my body doesn't feel good and there's some days where you press off the gas or let off the gas press the, the uh, brake pedal you don't push it because you don't want to hurt yourself but there are other days where you're like no I've got to grind I've got to get through it because you think about pro ball in the minor leagues we've got 140 game season big leagues 162 game season that's a lot and it's six seven months of baseball straight and someone's trying to steal your position every day and so you you're not it. working hard. Oh yeah. And the same thing that I tell the high school guys in the, youth, in the program that we coach, the youth guys in the youth program that we coach, all of our clients is like, you've got to take it on you because for every time you think you're working hard, there's somebody out there working harder. Well, there you go. You heard it right from the man himself. You got to put in the work. So don't just watch this video and go, all right, what's the next video I'm going to watch? <laughs> I do like when you watch my videos and just subscribe to You Go Pro Baseball, but you got to do something with it. Take the tips and use them, okay? Kyle was nice enough to share that information with you guys. If you want more information, check his Instagram out, at KGS Baseball, or at the website, kgsbaseball.com. A lot more great stuff over there, so go check it out now. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for all the information yes, again. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you guys in the next video.